In this virtual problem solving session, we're going to be looking at axial disc clutches. So we'll look at one problem, but different components of the single problem. So a clutch must transmit 15 horsepower at 1,725 RPM. Using the uniform wear approach, determine a suitable size and required actuating force for a single dry clutch lined with friction material, powdered metal on hard steel. Assume little d, so the inside diameter, equals 0.557 of big D, the outside diameter. I'm going to show you how this looks in my analysis tool and what equations you should be putting into your tool. There are three formulas or equations for disc clutches, and they should all be in your tool. So equation 1623 is actuating force, aka total normal force, as a function of geometry and pressure. So here is the formula as it appears in the textbook. Here it is in my analysis tool. So actuating force is a function of both pressure and geometry, meaning big D, little d. Next, equation 1624, torque is a function of max pressure, friction, and geometry. So again, here is the equation to enter, and here it is in my tool. So torque is a function of max pressure, friction, and geometry. Again, big D, little d. And then lastly, equation 1625, torque as a function of actuating force, friction, and geometry. So torque is the output. It puts our actuating force, friction, and geometry. In our case, we have to figure out which of these equations to use first, and it's going to depend on what we already know. So we know the power to be transmitted and the speed. So therefore, we can figure out the torque. So that means uh, this equation or this equation would be good candidates. We don't know F and we don't know D. So there would be too many unknowns in equation 1625. But we can look up the properties of our friction material, powdered metal on hard steel, and get values for F and for PA. So let's do that now. So drop in these tables to your tool 16.3 and 16.5. So powdered metal on hard steel. We want to just take the, the mid-range friction coefficient value just so we're on the same page about answers. So 0.2 would be our friction coefficient. And here we don't have a range for maximum pressure. It's just given as 300 PSI. And remember what this is. This is the maximum compression that we want the friction material to experience. So let's remember these numbers, 0.2 and 300. Okay, let's figure out how to calculate torque from the power and speed. So in my analysis tool, it's kind of at the bottom after all of the disc clutch equations and disc brake equations. I have a little area for required torque from power and speed. So here are the inputs, 15 horsepower, 1,725 RPM, and the torque output is 548.05 pound-force inches. But let's look at how we get that. I want to explain this conversion to you so you can add it to your tool. So the first thing we need to start out with is that one horsepower equals 550 pound-force feet per second. So notice it's not given in inches, so you have to be careful. Then we know that power equals torque times speed, or torque equals power over speed. So we have 15 horsepower times 550 pound force feet per second over one horsepower. Times 12 inches per foot. I'm gonna divide that by 1,725 RPM, two pi radians per revolution, one minute, 60 seconds. So let's look at what cancels out. Horsepower cancels out with horsepower. 
feet cancels out with feet. So we have pound, foot, inches over seconds. We have rotation. It's going to cancel with revolution. Same thing. Radians is unitless, so we don't have to worry about that. Per minute. So here the minute is in the denominator. So that's going to cancel with minute. We get units of torque in pound force inches. So 548.05. Okay, so again, no need to do that by hand. It's good to know where it comes from. You just put this in your tool. It's going to save you some time. So let's look at what we're going to do with that. I have it up here because we're going to goal seek for this value of torque by changing big D. So you'll see that big D is an input, a yellow input, meaning I have to, you know, solve for it or enter it. Little d is an intermediate output. And before we move on, I'm going to talk about why this ratio of little d equals 0.577 big D exists. So this relationship, this little d equals 0.557 big D just comes from the basic premise of torque equaling force times distance. So for a constant actuating force, normal force, the further we are away from the axis of rotation, the greater the amount of torque that's going to develop in our clutch. So this is not given in Shigley, but it's a rule of thumb in another design book I really like that for kind of the optimal torque transfer, we use this ratio, little d equals 0.557 big D. Clutch material, if it were here close to the center of rotation, isn't doing that much in terms of transmitting torque. It's doing some, but it's just not doing a whole lot. So in my analysis tool, I have this relationship already set up. So you'll see if I enter one inch for my big D, the little d just spits out as 0.557. So you can do that. I also have another area in my analysis tool where both big D and little d can be put as inputs. So we don't have to um, always use that relationship of little d equals 0.557 of big D, and we'll see how we use this in the next part of the problem. But anyway, back up here, we're gonna goal seek for torque given the torque that we wanna have transmitted, 548 .05. 548.05. 548.05 by changing cell D. Okay, so we get big D 3.927 inches and little d 2.187 inches. That would be the exact dimensions if we wanted to transmit exactly 548.05 pound force inches of torque. But again, we're just, we're picking a PA of 300 and an F of 0.2. So we're, we're saying that we don't want to transmit more torque because we would go past our pressure threshold and we're going to use the mid-range value of F. So this all depends on kind of your assumptions for F and for PA. So, so far we've gotten D equals 3.927 inches. Oops, that was big D. And little d, 2.187 inches. So the next part of the problem, if you were to round big D and little d to the nearest one eighth of an inch, what would be the new power transmitted? And what is the maximum pressure that develops in the lining as a result of this geometry change? And is this within acceptable limits? So I'll show you where this is in my tool. So I get worried about, I don't, I don't want to do that routine right here because I'd have to overwrite my little d. So it's just safest to copy and paste it somewhere else. So that's where it is down here. I'm going to keep the friction coefficient the same, keep PA the same. So now I'm going to round. And I just have this little, these little columns in my tool where I have one eighth in, 
1 8 inch increments and 1 16 inch increments. So 1 8 inch increments, if we are to round big D 3.927 inches, it is not closest to 4 inches, it's closest to 3.875 or 3 and 7 eighths inches. So let's enter that for our big D, 3.875. And then little d is closest to 2 and 1 eighth inches, so 2.125. And see our transmitted torque is different. And I mean, depending on the application, this could be negligible or it could be substantial. So the point is, if you're rounding up these, rounding up or down your values for D and little d to more standard sizes, you have to go back and make sure that that's not going to um, kind of move you out of bounds for the amount of power and torque to be transmitted. So let's report our answers. So rounded to nearest 1 8 inch, we get big D equals 3, say 7 8 inch, and little d equals 2 and 1 8 inch. So the torque that resulted, T equals 525.8 seven. But the problem is asking what is the new power transmitted? So we have to go back to the tool. Data, what if analysis goal seek? I'm gonna set cell T to 525. Let's carry out a bunch of numbers. 0.726 by changing cell H. So speed is not changing. 14.4. So this is interesting. I like thinking about things in this way, kind of visually. So we are transmitting less torque, hence we're transmitting less power. And let's look at why. So when we moved from big D of 3.927 inches to 3 and 7 eighths inches, or 3.875 inches, we were essentially making this outer D a little bit smaller. And then for the little D, 2.187 inches, we went to two and one eighth inches, so 2.125 inches. So we deuced that little d, but what we did, which is the interesting part, I think, it's like we made this donut smaller. So we brought that friction material closer into the axis of rotation by a little bit, and hence we um, reduced the power to be transmitted. So that's kind of an interesting way to think about this conceptually. So the next part of this question, what is the maximum pressure that develops in the lining, and is this within acceptable limits? I probably wouldn't ask this on an exam because there are different ways to interpret it, but. What I mean here is if we were to go back to our original amount of torque to be transmitted, or power, so 15 horsepower at 1,725 RPM, using these rounded values for big D and little d, what would be the resultant pressure on the lining? So let's look at that. Okay, this time we're gonna set cell T to our original value, 548.05, by changing cell PA. So, yeah, we see that it is has exceeded the allowable pressure for our material of powdered metal on hard steel. So again, where is that coming from? Coming back from this table, the maximum pressure is 300 PSI. 
So kind of the moral of the story, when you go about changing these dimensions, even if it's only to an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch, you have to look at how it impacts other factors. Then the last question, if the power to be transmitted were increased by a factor of three, given the same speed and the same friction disk geometry, how many surfaces would you need? This is not a super complicated calculation. All we're doing is changing this from 15 to 45. So that's going to increase our torque. So 1,644.14. So this is what we want to transmit. The thing to remember, that, and this is a really critical thing to remember, it's said in the book, but I'm going to say it again here. Equation 1624 and equation 1625 is only the torque for a single friction surface, so a single donut of friction material. So with 0.2 as our coefficient of friction, limiting the pressure to 300 PSI, big D and little d, as shown, so we're not changing the geometry, a single surface, a single friction surface would transmit 548.05 pound force inches. So how many, how many disks would we need? We would need three, and that follows uh, because we increased the power required by threefold. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So that's why I asked that question, and it's on your homework as well. Then lastly, we kind of forgot to, or I kind of forgot to do this part up here, um, required actuating force. So let's see how to figure out the actuating force, because we haven't um, had that as an input or output in any of our equations yet. So you have two choices. You could use 1623 or 1625. 1623 is going to be easiest because it's a direct output for actuating force. So 300, big D, 3.927, little d, automatic. So our actuating force, 1,773.7 pounds. Let's say if we let's see if we get the same result from equation 1625. These equations are all just kind of like re-scrambled versions of the other. So what if analysis goal seek? Let's see, we're going to set this cell to value 548.05 by changing F. So we get 1773.7 compared to 1770. So we are getting a little bit of rounding error, and I think that is because, let's see, D and, big D and little d were entered into four significant figures, but when we goal seeked, we had some more significant figures in big D, little d. But it's close, so I would accept a range of values here. I think the easiest equation to use would just be 1623. So this is the, the normal force of the actuating force required to um, essentially get enough friction going so that the, the power can be transmitted. All right, so let's look at your homework. All right, the first problem, 20 points. Find the torque that a two-surface dry disc clutch powdered metal on cast iron can transmit. Here you're given the D. Big D is 120, and little d is 70 millimeters. So here, these values are close to little d equals 0 0.577 D, but you're given the actual values. Okay, so use the actual values. You can assume that two surface means that there is a friction material on both sides of the disc. This will impact the amount of torque that can be transmitted. Assume uniform wear. All right, so the, the trick here is to kind of think about what I talked about earlier, that equation 1624 
as well as 1625 are only for a single friction surface. So how is your approach to this problem going to change given that you have um, a two surface dry disc clutch? But that's the only kind of twist. When you are reporting as powdered metal on cast iron and acceptable friction material, when I say justify your answer, I mean that numerically. Then problem two is really similar to what we just did. Design a single surface di disc clutch to transmit 850, oh, there's a typo. I'll fix this on the cover sheet. Pound force inch of torque at 750 RPM using a dry, rigid, molded, non-asbestos lining. I promise this is in one of the tables. Assume uniform wear, and here you are, like we did before, your goal seeking for big D so you can find little d based on this relationship. And then this is what we just did, but in this case, you're rounding to the nearest 1 16th of an inch, whereas what we just did in the example problem was rounding to 1 8th inch. And what would be the actual power transmitted? Last problem for clutches, what is the minimum number of friction surfaces needed in a multi-plate? dry disc clutch to transmit 1200 Newton meters of torque using a centered lining. So the little twist here is that you have metric units given the actuating force. So that's what's different in this case. And then you're given the big D and little d respectively. Okay, so that's it. I hope this was helpful. I think clutches and brakes are really interesting for some reason. Um, I like gears and I like clutches and disc brakes. So I hope you enjoyed this assignment. See you soon. Bye.